Because I've already done that. But I'm down to do it with a bucket again. I haven't... You can in there a different... All of his co-workers okay. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a mem... As Stanley lifted his bucket, he felt a connection to all buckets everywhere. This adventure, he decided, was for all of them. All right. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this Chat. ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley. I broke my phone. And any new content for it should live up to that legacy. And so uh, this ultra deluxe nonsense, I say we take it one step even further. How does that even Which happen? The camera? I'm very proud to announce for the first is time the ever camera lens literally broke. It's a hole. Like I've never seen that before. Anyways, it still works, so I'm not gonna change it. Um, all right. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities, it could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure... The cassette I room? I don't know if I've been to the cassette room or not. Concepts, that surely the game will We're definitely reaching the end of, like, where my brain has remembered what I'm out. doing. Let's go game straight to the... Is much straight to the bucket. Here. Go on, try out some of the new features. Wait, did I take the bucket into the hole? Wait, there are two buckets here. How did you get a second bucket? Oh no, the warmth and comfort of a single bucket is already so great, so intoxicatingly wonderful. With two buckets, there's no telling. Stanley, can you still hear me? Are you with me? <laughs> Stanley! Oh, thank God. I didn't lose you. Stanley, the power of two buckets was too much. I had to destroy both of them. I know how much the bucket meant to you, but I couldn't take the risk. I hope one day you can forgive me. Fuck you, man! You ass! I missed my bucket! No! Oh, oh, God. Oh, fuck. All right. Should I restart then? Yeah. All right. I want to go hole with the bucket. Also, what video dis? See there, Timmy. What's that you're enjoying? Why? It's breakfast, of course. Mm. Everyone loves breakfast. But did you know that breakfast is getting a sequel? What? That's right. It's called Lunch. And critics are raving that lunch will be everything breakfast was and more. No With way. a little luck, we may even get a trilogy series out of it. Say, you know what a sequel is, don't you, Timmy? Why? Sequels are the world's way of clinging helplessly to the past. We all want more of the things we love, and we're all afraid of change, which is what makes sequels so popular. New ideas are dangerous, Timmy, and they can lead to early aging. This eager-minded young thinker is just 29 years old. That's why we have sequels, to keep us couched in the familiar and the comfortable. Sequels are the bedrock of a healthy, functional society, and if you look around you, you'll find them everywhere you go. 
For instance, this man is developing a sequel to the automobile, nice. which we'll call the vertical automobile. It's a useless, impractical invention. And in two days' time, the man will be publicly stoned to death for his crimes against gravity. <laughs> Not all sequels are heretical nonsense, however. Here's the man who invented breathing, which is the sequel to suffocating and dying a slow death. <laughs> Even your parents are getting a sequel, Timmy. Their names are Rob and Jessica, and they'll be taking care of you once your original parents are sent back in time to fight a secret war for the government. Sequels can be very fashionable. This young woman is wearing five shirts at once, which is the sequel to wearing four shirts at once. Look at Becky over there, wearing only two shirts at once. Get with the times, Becky. <laughs> in fact, there is only one single thing in the world that isn't a sequel. <laughs> it's this. We don't know what it is or why it exists, but it's the prequel from which all sequels are derived. And just like everything else, the Stanley Parable is getting a sequel too. Woo! We all know, of course, that it was your favorite game as a child. Don't you remember those long, lazy afternoons you spent playing the Stanley Parable? Watching your precious youth fritter away hour after hour. We've all wasted our childhoods in one way or another, and you were fortunate enough to get to waste yours on the Stanley Parable. But the Stanley Parable came out years ago, and you're not a child anymore. You're a man, which is like the sequel to a child. True. And as a man, you want manly things, like taxes and cheating at baseball. You need a man's video game, Timmy. And that's why the Stanley Parable 2 will be perfect for you. It's as manly as video games can get. And if you don't believe me, let's look at the burly hunk of a man who's responsible for the game. Huh, here he is, hard at work. His name is Gregory Eightpack. Hi. And he's the cutting picture of raw, virile masculinity. Look at that. Gregory is what we the ideas guy. And he has the most important role on the team. The ideas guy tirelessly comes up with interesting concepts and then hands them off to the rest of the developers for the relatively simple job of turning those concepts into reality. For example, he's the one who picked up the phone and declared, someone ought to make a sequel to the Stanley Parable. Good work, Gregory. Go ahead and take the rest of the day off. With the hard part out of the way, work on the game can now begin. The game's developers must answer a simple question. What makes a sequel in the first place? Well, it's simple. Sequels are an opportunity to correct the mistakes of their predecessors. We've all made mistakes, and we've all caused harm to someone we love in order to cover up our mistakes. When developing this particular sequel, it's important to start by thinking, what mistakes did the original Stanley Parable make? Well, first off, most of the pornography in the original game what? was stolen or pirated, and it's time we paid the licensing fees fair and square. What? <laughs> Second, the Stanley Parable was catastrophic for this man named Leroy, whose personal information, including home address, social security number, and bank information, were all displayed prominently in multiple locations throughout the game. The Although fuck? Leroy's money and identity were stolen, the fact remains that his personal information was the emotional core of the game and absolutely vital to a nuanced understanding of the story. As reparation for the harm we caused him, the sequel will contain a brief and insincere apology to Leroy tucked deep within the game where it will be difficult to find. I need to find it. Finally, the Stanley Parable made the mistake of leaking too many government secrets about the nature of the time wars. Without these intricate details of specific military tactics, the story is likely to make very little sense. But we've decided to remove them from the sequel in the interest of helping the state's efforts. We'll get to you yet, Time Dracula. Now then, it's time to set about constructing the Stanley Parable 2. Game development is a difficult and complex art, one which can only be fully understood by this race of hyper-intelligent child soldiers bred in laboratories. They begin by studying the original Stanley Parable. Here it is in its raw, untouched form. Ah, a wow. specimen of technological perfection. Time to exploit it for profit. We begin by adding jokes. The Stanley Parable was most widely known for its stark lack of humor, bucking all conventional industry wisdom. It was a bold artist statement that its developers stood firmly behind. You know what I realized? Writing is a dying art. 
but in 2022, it's impossible to reach even a single consumer of video games without jokes of some kind. So very well, jokes it'll be. During its development, over 500 kiloliters of comedy will be funneled directly into the core of the Stanley Parable 2. Creating jobs for hundreds of machine operators and producing 30,000 tons of pollutant chemical byproduct, which will be pumped directly into local lakes, rivers, nice. and beautiful nature reserves like these nice. all over the country. Nice. Another common complaint of the Stanley Parable is that there wasn't enough <laughs> gameplay. And so for the sequel, its developers have gone to great lengths to fix this problem. Here we can see gameplay being printed on the sheets. Every video game contains as many as a thousand sheets of gameplay. And mm. several of the largest games ever made contain close to 1,500. On mobile devices, the gameplay sheets have to be printed smaller. For the Stanley Parable 2, as many as 35 new gameplay sheets are being printed, each That's of it. which must be delicately massaged by the hands of a child before being added into the game. This man is stealing gameplay sheets from the factory, which he likely intends to use for a personal project he's been developing in his spare time. A good public stoning will cure him of that inclination. <laughs> Let's check on Gregory real quick. Ha! Still recovering from a hard day's work. Don't you move a muscle. Next up, it's time to blackmail the press. In a competitive market, blackmailing your local journalist can be one of the most effective methods of creating word of mouth buzz for your sequel. In fact, blackmail is the currency of social progress. True. From your neighborhood grocer to the teacher at your school to the man who helps you steal HBO, everyone responds to blackmail. And if you've never done it before, it's easy to practice at home on your friends and family. Simply follow the instructional pamphlet that your teacher hands out after the end of the film. And finally, there's one last tool at our disposal for making the sequel feel fresh and exciting. And that's packaging the game with collector's edition merchandise. If you order the Stanley Parable 2, you'll receive this cow's egg. A single egg will produce over what? a thousand cows, Wait. which are, of course, the sequel to pigs. Yeah. And there well. you have it. Everything there is to know about producing the Stanley Parable 2. Of course, you may know that there is also a game titled The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. So which game is the true sequel to The Stanley Parable? It's an excellent question, Billy. One which the child soldiers have been working round the clock to come up with an answer to. And after many weeks of diligent research, the conclusion they've reached is, who gives a shit? <laughs> All that matters is that it's more content for you to cram down your insatiable gullet. You don't want thoughtful and nuanced answers to complex questions, Billy. You just want to eat bubblegum and cheat at hopscotch. And? So get out there and consume. Do your civic duty and bully your parents into buying you every version of the Stanley Parable 2 on every platform. Tell your friends to bully their parents as well. It's through community efforts like these that the world comes together in harmony and connection. And it's only through this connection oh my that we'll defeat Time Dracula once and for all. Don't let the time-traveling vampires win. Buy the Stanley Parable 2 and pledge to support all sequels for today, tomorrow, and into the great unknowable beyond. All right, buy it. <laughs> Wait, Billy, it's only three. Wait, that's the oldest looking three-year-old I've ever seen. Oh, man. Okay. Rip Billy. Um, time to take the uh, bucket to the, uh, to the, to the hole. My God, the bumpscosity in here is absolutely overwhelming. A thousand? You people have got to be nuts. How can you stand this much bumpscosity? Should I turn it down? Sorry, brother. I'll turn it down to a hundred. Okay. Wait, no additional audio? What new mysteries lay in store for our bucket loving heroes today? Let's find out. Oh shit! I didn't mean to do that. You know what? Fuck it. It's time for a new desktop.
New sequel, Stanley Parable 8. Dreams of Lawsuit. Wicked. What? <laughs> Hold on. What's this? <laughs> Eight. <laughs> eight. 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 The Stanley Parable Eight? No, 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 no. This doesn't look right at all. The Stanley Parable takes place in an office building. There are doors and branching paths. This is just a button that says eight. Where did the Stanley Parable go? <laughs> eight. <laughs> There's nothing better. This game does so good. Whoa. What the fuck? This game does so good at 427's got a stapler. One of those old things, a shark thing. This is like one of, uh, like, there's nothing better than stumbling across, like, m content like that. Eight. 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 All right, is that it? Okay. Eight. Well, I'm looking around and I really <laughs> can't find the game anywhere. No boss's office or mind control facility or any of that. Literally just this eight button. And what's worse is that you seem to be having a better time with this nonsense game than with the story I wrote for you. I'm actually a little insulted. Sorry. <laughs> eight. Eight. <laughs> eight. 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 All right. Well, I think. Eight. Eight. It's weird that they have five things for eight, right? You know what I mean? I don't get the significance of that uh, at all. Eight. All right, I think I should restart here. Eight. 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 Well, I don't know what happened to the Stanley Parable or what the eight button is, but apparently you're having a riveting time with it. And frankly, I don't even want to pander to someone who finds this enjoyable. So with that, I guess just go ahead and enjoy the Stanley Parable Eight. 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 Woo! Eight. Eight. Can I pee? Eight. Eight. Will you guys tell me if something eight. fun happens while I pee? Eight. 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 Wait. Oh God. Hold on. What's this? Eight. 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 The eight. Stanley Parable. Oh no. What if I ruined it? What's Stanley Parable 9? What could this possibly have? Hmm. Um, hidden the book of love. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four to normal. All right. Well, that's that was that was normal. We're back. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. All right. What have I? What? What else can I do here? What haven't I done yet? 
Um. The bucket hole? Oh wait, yes, yeah, still waiting to do that. Oh my now god. This, Stanley thought to himself, this is a bucket. And indeed it was. All right, upstairs we go. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly. I can't remember how to get the uh, escape pod with the bucket. The original Stanley parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Eighth. Parable 2. Eighth time. Maybe ninth. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. Here we are. Go on. I don't think I've been through here. Features. I know this goes to the other side. I don't think I've been here in a sec. Yeah, I'll ask I'll ask for help if I okay, want it. Okay, I'll be honest. I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration. Wait, we've like already balloons. done this. Can I change the but decorations? I've decided on get well someday and happy 12th birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step niece it is. Yay! Well, actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. New balloon just dropped. Boys, new balloon. Uh, alrighty. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport it's the button same. to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas Identical. For the sequel. Rip. Throw it down, you can't drop the bucket once you pick it up. Yeah, we can try. What's the customization with the bucket? Okay, and I guess we're back in the hole now. I mean, I think Did it's gonna be really exactly the same. Again? I don't know what else there is to say, Stanley. It's an infinite hole. It's exactly what you're doing right now, but forever. There really are so All right, what else do I need to do? That I, prepared for you. I need I really to do, uh... I don't actually know what else I have. I have to kill myself in the camera room. I got my new. All of his co-workers were gone. I got my new what uh, whatever the hell. Escape to to pod with a bucket. Perhaps I don't know how to get to the escape Mr. pod. Mano. Can you remind me? Finally. Escape yes. pod. The bucket. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I love that bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. The boss's office before the door closes? Before what door closes?
You say psych when entering the boss and leave before the door closed. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Oh, this one? Stepping in. Oh. Right. Well, all the way to the beginning, I guess. Gotta say, I like the new. Personally, I like the new uh, balloons. I think they've got a great color to them, way better than the white balloon. Okay. Escape pod. Can I drop down on there? Eh. Red door. Elevator is locked. Oh god. Oh god. Wait, it looks very similar, guys. It looks like the same place over and over and over again. Oh, guys, don't worry. Just a couple more, you know? Okay. Yep, yeah, one more floor, maybe? Yep. This is it. Warning, entering the escape pod will initiate a relay that once triggered cannot be disabled or paused. Must be present in order to blah, blah, blah. Ah, whatever. Probably not that important, am I right? Seems like a really big room to have such a small escape pod. Wait. No. No. <laughs> Shh. Don't cry. Look. It's me or you, Bucket. You know I care about you. Look, I, I don't want to hear it. One of us has to live. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. I love you. Live. Be free, Mr. Bucket. Be free. I. Oh my god. Okay, I've never had that ending. I should try that without the bucket, though. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. No! 
No! No! Bucky is gone! No, he's gone! <laughs> no, take me with you! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. <laughs> well, Feeling son! Of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping in. It's so creepy how like liminal. I mean, it's not very liminal, but like it. This this office building is just very annoying, and very like haunting to me. All right. Wait. Yeah, broom closet ending was like one of the first ones that I got. Um... I, in general, I think I've gotten a lot of the common ones. Now I'm just trying to even it out, really get all the ones that I've been missing that I think um, are good ones or ones that I don't even know about. I mean, we, the whole like Stanley Parable 8 type thing, didn't know that, that would happen. So that one was pretty cool. I missed my bucket though. Straight up. Miss it dearly. Uh huh. What? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty yeah, we'll try the yes. into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? I'm drinking it in, baby. Okay, I'm over it now. Okay, what never you mind. Are you sick of this gag yet? Yes. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. Like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. 
What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. What the hell? Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too will become quite unbearable. Woo! Bars. I have gone up and down in the boss room elevator. A bunch. Is that on a loop? Oh, Kind of soothing. Well, I don't have a bucket anymore, which is kind of a problem. Inferno T spawn, yeah. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No, no, the orders were still missing. For now. You sure? Yeah, I could probably get one by going through to the content. Uh... Oh! One man, one bucket. One chance to seize their destiny together. He's back. Stanley He's back, the baby. Tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. He's back. I'm going to order Taco Bell. I've decided. I've decided tonight I'm going to order Taco Bell delivery. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. That's how Perhaps tired and like miserable I feel. Not that Taco Bell is bad, but that like sometimes the only the thing that can cure you is being miserable and eating like just an absolutely degenerate meal. Thought something would happen there. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. 
It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty... And redeem? Right. You're, you're right. The Thank you for reminding me. Stanley. Doing this for the Everything bucket? 07 for Clink. Thanks for lurking for so hard, man. Five years? That's a pretty exceptional lurk. I appreciate you watching for so long. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. Oh? Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. One more? All right, we're done. What about the number eight? What's up, Zancifer? Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. Maybe. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. Is the bucket? Is the bucket being meanie? I feel like the bucket should reciprocate my love a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. Just a small, just a small amount. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Damn. You don't like what I like? Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution. <laughs> How do I reach the these buckets? How do I reach these kids? said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided what? right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. 
and it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it, until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. Wow. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Wow. All eyes on Stanley, guys. Can you wait? Oh, my God. An evening with world peace, baby. Wow. Incredible. Very exciting. Doing great. A conversation with Alexander the Great. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. Remember where you came from, your co-workers. <sighs> okay. I like the wallpapers like eyes. I played the demo. I went to the mind control facility. Eight! All right. Well, an audience with the dude that came up with pizza. Huge. Huge. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak. To hey, who coughed? Talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting. He was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious, that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit. Only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Damn, that's dark. Did you just hear something vibrate? Did you just hear somebody's phone vibrate in the crowd? Wait, the bucket did not expect. Wait, what did that? What did that just say? How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes, days, centuries. Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. Uh oh. Should I grab it? Should I grab bucket? I should. It's bucket time. Woo! Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. I want a sticker.
All right, no more stickers. That's fine. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. Well, at this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. What the hell? Alrighty. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Yeah, I can I can jump off with the, the cameras. Was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was eight. two eight four five. Three. Oh, it ha it gave me an achievement. Gotcha. Two eight four five. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly Shoot. the most logical All right, so I don't know how to jump off when I get down here. I don't know. I have tried escaping with the bucket. It was, we just did that. It was great. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? But just as Stanley was about to proceed further into the mind control facility, he tripped and fell over the railing and into the dark void below. Thankfully, he fell directly onto the bucket, which safely cushioned his fall. Mm. Now, what to do next, Stanley wondered. Stanley and the bucket could find no way out of this enormous pit, and so eventually they decided that the best thing to do would be to simply get comfortable down here. So they set up a little couch and relaxed. It really wasn't so bad down here, a bit cold, perhaps. After some time had gone by, they installed a few shelves as well, and a sort of kitchenette that was useful for when the bucket was craving paninias. But it wasn't until the rugs and the standing lamps came in that it really started nice rug. to feel like a home. In fact, after some time, Stanley realized that it had been ages since he had even thought of the mind control facility at all. He'd never gotten to fully explore what was up there, never been able to unearth the many mysteries of the mind control facility. This lack of closure began to eat at him. Soon he was dwelling on his regrets, and the state of their home slowly decayed as Stanley became withdrawn and neglected the cleaning. It unsettled the bucket deeply. Stanley wasn't usually like this. The bucket tried to reach out to him again and again, but to no avail. All Stanley could think about, all he could talk about, was going back, doing it over again, staying on the path. It was a mistake to leave the path. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I need to do what the narrator says. I need to see the true ending. This made no sense at all to the bucket which was simply trying to live its life down here as comfortably as possible. Yet Stanley was unconsolable. This isn't an ending. This is just a hole in the ground. The but I love the hole! True, it wasn't an ending. But it's where we happen to be. And maybe, possibly, if we accept the reality of things, maybe this will become an ending eventually. It's what the bucket was counting on. The two of them waited for a very long time. 
All right, now I have to do that without a... What? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Woo! No. All right, listen. I swear to God, if I turn on dog mode and something doesn't happen... Okay. Let him bark. <laughs> Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Now I'm going to do the same thing with when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Uh no, I'm going to go kill myself again. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the sh- Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. <laughs> Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Okay. Shall we? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Aha! You've made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. Welcome! You see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. And you all sent us lots of photos of it on Twitter and acted very superior about it. And you're all very, very clever. Good for you. Anyway, when it came time to update the game, we knew that we had to do something about this little goof of ours, so... Here you go. New content. You can call it the bottom of the mind control room ending, if that enhances your perception of the value of these updates. Isn't that what you crave? New content? Always more content, more content, more, 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 more. And I'm here to give it to you. I'm here to make it seem like we really covered every nook and cranny of the game with secrets and Easter eggs. How about this? We wrote a new piece of music <coughs> just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret that's just for you. That's how special you are. We call this track, Good Job You've Made It to the Bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Well done. Thank you. Good job. You did it. Good job. Good 
job You made it to the bottom of the mind control facility You jumped on the catwalk You should have been careful You should have been careful It used to be a bug But now it's an ending Now it's an ending I believe in you I believe in your ability To cross this barrier And chase your dreams The railings don't mean anything Good job, you did it 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 Wow! Incredible. I did it. Thank you.